And uh, would you stand with me tonight and go to the Christmas story, uh, Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 26. Luke chapter 1 and uh, verse 26. Uh, if you're glad to be here tonight, say amen. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. I want to read uh, about the announcement of the birth of Jesus to Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art what, church? And the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Read out loud verse 37 with me. For with God nothing shall be impossible. I think you need to read that again. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Now verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And before I preach tonight, I want you just to put your hand and say, Lord, just be it unto me according to your word. Father, tonight anoint your servant to preach the word of God. Be it unto me tonight according to your word, your good word that you've caused us to hope. Father, we praise you for this miracle of the virgin birth. Anoint your servant to speak, and we'll give you the praise. And everybody said amen. And turn around and tell somebody that you are blessed and highly favored of God. You are blessed and highly favored of God. In 1984, the songwriter Mark Lowry wrote the song while on staff at his church that we've all come to love and that never gets old. It's the song, Mary, Did You Know? And it was first recorded, actually, by Michael English on his album in 1991, was the first recording of it, national recording. So for over 30 years, this song, Mary, Did You Know?, has blessed so many during this time of the year. But this song has been criticized. Uh, someone has says that the text has received both praise for reflecting the love of God as well as criticism for the perceived ambu ambiguity or lack of theological depth. Uh, Baptist theologian Michael Frost suggested that it was the most sexist Christmas song ever written. It treats her like a clueless child. Could you imagine a song asking Abraham 17 times if he knew he'd be the father of a great nation? But another minister, Robert uh, Teague, and also Michelle Arnold, they were Roman Catholic commentators, and they didn't like the line that the child that you delivered will someday deliver you. And the Catholics, on their theologians, they criticized the song, and they said that it might confuse people or challenge the belief that Mary herself was conceived without uh, sin. Well, the truth of the matter is, the answer to the question is that, yes, Mary did know. And there's a lot of debate upon this. But the scripture I read to you tonight is crystal clear. And that's what I want to speak to you about tonight is about the virgin birth. And are we really sure uh, that we have the virgin birth? Uh, you see, there are people that have gone on both ends of the spectrum. There are 
There are those who take it too far, like these Roman Catholics who, who, uh, who have said that Mary was so pure that she had never sinned. Uh, and if, and, um, but notice it says that in our text, um, in verse 28 of Luke chapter 1, it says, And the angel came into her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Uh, it didn't say that blessed art thou above women. It says, blessed art thou among women. She was just like any other man or woman or boy or child born in sin. And so some people take it too far, the virgin birth, and they begin to worship Mary. And then there are others who have gone the opposite direction and said that all of this is just a figure of speech or this truly couldn't be a literal virgin birth. But the truth of the matter is uh, that it was indeed a virgin birth and we can be sure. Uh, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 16, uh, it says uh, that and Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, called Christ. Now, if you go back to Matthew chapter 1, it says this one begot that one, and this one begot this one, and this one begot that one. And when it gets down to Jacob, uh, it says, and Jacob begot Joseph, just like the rest of them. But then it changes very, very noticeably here that Joseph didn't begot Jesus. If Jesus had been a natural child of Joseph, it would have just said, and Jacob begot Joseph, and Joseph begot Jesus. Uh, but it didn't say that because we can be sure of the virgin birth. Can you say amen tonight? In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13, and, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in the dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. And you're talking to Jews here. Jews didn't even hardly give children uh, any credence. Uh, uh, to Jews, children were considered, in a sense, inferior until they became adults. Uh, no Jew would have said, take the young child and the mother. Uh, any good Jew would have said, take the mother and the child. Uh, but see, I want you to understand something, that in all of Scripture, the child comes first. Uh, the child comes before the mother because we can be sure uh, that on that first Christmas morning, uh, Jesus didn't come from Mary. He came through Mary. Uh, it is the virgin birth, uh, and we can be sure. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Uh, I wish you'd praise him tonight uh, as the virgin born, uh, son of the living God. Uh, on this rock I'll build my church. Uh, can you say amen tonight? Now, um, I want to give you three things about the virgin birth to know that we can be sure is number one first uh point number one is the declaration of the virgin birth uh, um we can be sure about the virgin birth because you cannot have christianity without the virgin birth meaning that mary had never been with a man before she conceived christ even mary herself said how can this be saying i know not a man she had never been with a man and you cannot have christianity if Mary was not a virgin, there would be no Easter, no freedom, no salvation, and certainly no Christmas. Can you say amen? Uh, you see, it separates us from all the other religions of the world. You see, Muhammad had a natural mother and father. Buddha had a natural mother and father. David Koresh in the Branch Davidians, uh, even he uh, had a natural mother and father. And for Gen Xers, even Superman <laughs> on the planet Krypton <laughs> had a mother and a father. But I want you to know Jesus is more than a superman. Uh, Jesus, listen, is the only baby ever born who had an earthly mother but not an earthly father. He had a heavenly father, but not a heavenly mother. He is the only baby ever born, listen to this, who was older than his mother and as old as his daddy. Can you put your hand together and praise him that we can be sure? I see some of you say, read that again. <laughs> Jesus is the only baby ever born who had an earthly mother and a heavenly father. He had a heavenly father, but not a heavenly mother. He's the only baby ever born who was 
older than his mother and as old as his father. You see, the reason that the virgin birth is essential is because it has to do with the transmission of the sin nature. God had to have a perfect sacrifice to atone for sin. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. If the Lamb had been impure in any way, he could not have taken away the sin of the world. You see, the sin nature is transmitted by the blood of Adam, the father. You see, people will say falsely that we're all children of God. More correctly, we're all creations of God. But you cannot tell me Osama bin Laden was ever a child of the living God. He was a child of his mother and father and a child of the human creation, but he was never truly a child of God. You see, it's one thing to be born one time, but Jesus said you must be born again. And until you're born again, you're not truly a child of God Almighty. Can I get a witness out there tonight? And that's why uh, through that sin nature that Jesus, because of the virgin birth, he did not get Adam's sin nature transmitted to him. Had he been naturally conceived uh, through Mary and Joseph, uh, he could not have been the perfect sacrifice. Uh, go to uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 35. Uh, notice that when the angel came to Mary and said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the high shall overshadow thee, therefore also that holy thing that shall be born unto thee. Uh, and I want you to know that if, it, if Jesus had had a sin nature he might have been a cute thing he might have been a sweet little thing he might have been a cuddly little thing but if he had had that sin nature he would not have been a holy thing I want you to understand something that it was a holy thing it was a virgin birth can you say amen tonight a little boy called his little sister a bad name then he hit her with the broomstick and spit on her now that's the sin nature the mother said to the naughty child, you shouldn't have done that to your sister. The little boy said, the devil made me call her a bad name. The devil made me hit her with that broomstick. But spitting on her was actually my idea. Without the virgin birth... Jesus would have beat his sisters with a broomstick and probably would have spit on them just like everybody else would have done those childhood games. But that's the declaration of it. He is and was and must be, and we must preach it and shout it and exclaim it and experience the declaration of the virgin birth. Can you say amen? And then what? how did it come to pass? How can a virgin conceive? Let's talk about number two, the realization of the virgin birth. It was, number one, a miracle of prophecy. And I don't know if I have the, yes, it was the miracle of prophecy. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 that was quoted this morning said, way back in the garden of Eden, uh, it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Notice the language. It didn't say between thy seed and his seed. No, her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So please understand that when Jesus was conceived of the woman, it was her seed. It was a miracle of prophecy. And then in Isaiah chapter 7, the great cornerstone uh, of Christianity. Uh, if this is removed, then all of it's move, removed. Uh, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold a virgin. In fact, some translations literally say, behold the virgin uh, shall conceive and bear a son uh, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Oh, hallelujah for the realization. Uh, it was a miracle of 
of prophecy. And I don't really have time to chase a rabbit here, but there was uh, several hundred prophecies. Uh, it said where he would be born. It talked about how he would die. It talked about uh, who his uh, uh, family would be. And it spoke of how people would react to him and prophecy after prophecy. And one man fulfilling that prophecy on his own uh, was is an astronomical odds. Uh, oh, my friend, you can trust uh, in this book. Uh, you can trust in the Savior. You can, oh, hell, King Jesus, uh, let us praise him this Christmas. Uh, he is the virgin-born Son of God. It was a miracle of prophecy. If Jesus were the biological son of Joseph, how could he ever he could have never, listen, he could have never claimed the throne of David. Why? Because, notice in Jeremiah chapter 22 and verse 30. It's very interesting. Jeremiah 22 and 30. This is the miracle of prophecy. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless. This is talking about one of the kings of Israel. A man shall not prosper in his days. A man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. And you do research, and this curse came all the way down to Joseph. So if Joseph had been the biological child of Jesus, he would not have legally been able to inherit the throne of his father, David. But he didn't come from Joseph. He came from Mary. And see, Joseph was descended from Solomon. And uh, however, uh, Mary traced her lineage back to another son of Solomon by the name of Nathan. And so he could still rule on the throne of David legally because he didn't come through the curse line. He came through Nathan, and he was a descendant uh, in the flesh of David. And you, you can beat up on Israel all you want to, and you can, and it's, it just really uh, shocks me that university presidents will allow their students to march in the street and verbally call for the genocide of the Jews. You would never call for the genocide of the African Americans and get by with it. You would never call for the genocide of gays or lesbians and get by with it. And you shouldn't get by with calling for the genocide of African Americans, European Americans, uh, uh, Hispanic Americans, uh, and no certainly you should never get by with calling for the genocide of the Jews. One of those uh, university presidents went right home and promptly got fired. Uh, praise God uh, that people rose up against that. Jesus Christ will rule uh, from the... From the state of Israel, uh, he will inherit legally uh, and royally the throne uh, of his father David. Uh, let the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing. Uh, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Uh, I wish somebody say amen tonight. Not only was it a miracle of prophecy, it was a miracle of physiology. Everybody knows that to have a baby, there must be a man and a woman. But God stepped in. And notice it says, unto us a child is born. That's Mary. But also unto us a son is given. And that is God Almighty. It was a miracle prophetically. It was a miracle physiology, uh, physiologically. And so that was the realization of the virgin birth, the declaration of the virgin birth. And here's some preach tonight before I close. What, there's some inspiration that comes from the virgin birth. There's a lot that can inspire you from this from this Christmas story. Uh, one of the things that can inspire us uh, is uh, Mary's purity, that she was a teenager, and she was a holy teenager. She had kept herself sexually pure, and, and, I, and this is just a good time, uh, and I know I see a lot of gray hair out there. Uh, praise God, we're all about married and got children, uh, but somebody might stumble across this YouTube video, uh, and let me encourage you to let Mary be an example uh, that she kept her purity Purity, and she saved herself to the appropriate time. Uh, there's something to be said in this 
last day of Netflix uh, series and, and everything that is raunchy and all of the nudity that we see splashed publicly in commercials. Uh, it's something uh, God honors purity. Uh, he honors holy vessels. Uh, the Bible says, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Uh, no priest would just stroll into the temple uh, and have a uh, McDonald's uh, ketchup on their, on their uh, garments. Uh, and I know they didn't have McDonald's back then, but you get the point. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you wouldn't walk in there dirty with ketchup or stains, uh, and let alone uh, stains of sexual Im uh, purity and immorality. Oh, God, help us to be clean uh, and pure. Uh, God will help us if we struggle. Uh, he will be our forgiveness when we fail. Uh, but let's be clean that bears the vessels of the Lord. Uh, let's, let's keep our eyes upon the Lord, uh, and let's stay pure through the Spirit of God, uh, because it's through the Spirit that we mortify the deeds of the flesh. Mary inspires us. There's not only inspiration of purity, but there's inspiration of patience. Somebody say patience. Now I want you to know that for hundreds of years, they waited, and they waited for the promised Messiah. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Somebody say fullness of time. And I tell you, God, I'm learning as I get older. He's not in a hurry. <laughs> but I'm also learning as I get over. He's never late. Just in the nick of time. Just when you think you can't. Just when you think it's over. I'll tell you, God stepped in. And he said, you've been waiting for the Messiah, but now is the time. Christmas season ought to remind us uh, of God's perfect timing in our life. Wait upon the Lord, and he shall renew your strength. Uh, it is good to wait upon the Lord, uh, and he will not cause us to be ashamed that wait upon his name. The psalmist said, uh, let us trust him in the trials. Uh, let us trust him when there seems to be a delay, when the heavens are brass, and when there's no answer. Uh, please understand, there will come suddenly an angel of the Lord uh, who will say, to you uh, it's over now it's the time I'm about to do something uh, and I feel the Lord wants to tell some people tonight uh, some some lost children are about to get under conviction amen uh, there's some people here tonight that are about to be set free uh, because now it's the time uh, this is the day uh, God is up to something uh, there are no more delays I speak it in the name of Jesus well somebody give him praise for that tonight uh, you've been patient uh, and I'll tell you, patience uh, pays off. And not only that, but there's the inspiration of purity and patience and position. What do you mean by position? He said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored of God, and blessed art thou among women. Boy, if the virgin birth doesn't inspire you about anything it ought to inspire you about this you are blessed and highly favored uh, oh you're not receiving it tonight do we need to practice it some more do we need to tell the devil again you are blessed and highly favored of god oh i'm i'm struggling with this or i've got some answer to no you are blessed and highly favored in of god praise the lord shout it i am blessed and highly favored of, of god give him a hand of praise tonight uh, be inspired tonight and then there's the as i close there's inspiration of power mary this is a two this is like five sermons Amen. I could have Haley done a sermon series. Amen. <laughs> but uh, this is a, a, a uh, it, it just, I do sermon series all the time. And I said, no, I'm just going to preach one, one each. But uh, I do it all. Amen. Praise God. My sermon series is really one sermon that I've got so many points that you would fall asleep before I finished. Amen. So I just have to divide them up so we can all handle it. But understand, listen, there's inspiration of purity. Say amen. There's inspiration of being patient. Say amen. There's that position, I'm highly favored, say amen. And then there's that power, hallelujah, power. What do you mean? I am a virgin. I've never been with a man. And you're talking about I'm going to get pregnant. She asked the three-letter word, how? I've been there. I'm like, how, Lord, are you going to do this? How, Lord? You know what I'm facing, amen? 
how are you going to fulfill that? Now, I don't doubt you. Now, she didn't have, she didn't have unbelief. She had a little bit of doubt. Now, there's a difference between unbelief and doubt. You know, <laughs> doubt is natural. Doubt is just, you know, just human. But unbelief is sinful. Unbelief, Mary would have said, it ain't going to happen no matter what you say. That's what unbelief says. And she would have just said, go, you know, she would have just replied back to God and just and had so much unbelief. But no, she had her doubts because, it, it you know, we are human. And she asked that three-letter word, how? And there's times when we're going to ask the Lord, how? I don't understand, Lord. I love you. I believe. Help thou sometimes my, my doubt, not unbelief. Uh, that's an incorrect translation. But understand this tonight. But we've got something. The answer came back. How shall this be? The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. It is time for the Pentecostal church in America and around the world, but especially in America. It is time for us to, to let the Holy Ghost come upon us one more time. It is time for us to get back to our roots. Uh, I heard about those revivals in the 50s and the 40s, and I heard about Azusa Street, and, and, and God's the same God. I heard about Oral Roberts going to Rocky Mountain, North Carolina in the 50s, and, and my, some of my family was there, and people uh, that got healed in that revival. And I say, how, Lord? Uh, it's the same answer for Mary. It's the same answer for Oral Roberts. Uh, it's the same answer for Azusa Street. Uh, it's the same answer for the first first church, the last church, and any church. Uh, it's this. The Holy Ghost uh, shall come upon you, uh, and the power of the highest uh, shall overshadow you. Uh, Lord, do it again, Lord. Uh, let us be inspired. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Uh, how will this church grow or any church grow? I'll tell you the best way is let this power of the Lord move in our lives. Are you dealing with a how tonight? How will we see revival? How will we see breakthrough? How will our loved ones be saved? How will God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Are you inspired? Say it with me. With God nothing shall be impossible. Come on. With God nothing shall be impossible. Now give him a hand of praise here tonight. Amen. Someone said he loved us so much that he came from a throne to a womb. Talk about a demotion. He loved you so much that he was willing to become a little baby. He was born in Mary's womb, but the real question is, has he been born in your heart? When news came of the surrender of General Lee at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, we've been to Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. President Abraham Lincoln shortly thereafter went to the home of Jefferson Davis in Richmond. And he went to the door of the house and knocked on the door and a woman came out. You know, they all fled. And a woman came out of President Jefferson Davis's house, and there was a little baby she was holding. It was, listen to this, it was Jefferson Davis's wife's wife and his child. New, he had had a newborn baby. And President Lincoln was asking if he was there. <laughs> she told him that her husband was not home, of course. But the baby was reaching out to the President Lincoln, and he took the child in his arms, and she reached up and planted a kiss on President Lincoln's cheek. That little baby did. Jefferson Davis's baby kissed President Lincoln. That's an amazing fact of history. And Lincoln, when he gave the child back, listen to this. <laughs> He said, tell your husband that for the sake of that kiss, I forgive all. Would you stand with me tonight? Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child.
Jesus, 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 so lowly, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen as the angels sing glory? Come on, Bill. Glory to the newborn. All right, stop right there. Let me tell you something. That baby uh, of Jefferson Davis is changed America. But I'll tell you, that baby of Bethlehem has changed the world. Have you received him tonight? Can you praise him tonight? Hallelujah. Do you need do you need an answer to the how question tonight? While we're singing up, why Brother Bill, Brother Bill, you got your mic, you ready? This is unrehearsed. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Oh, Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen while well, the angels sing glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. He was born in a manger. The Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. Three wise men came from afar, and they were guided by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. I said, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Come on, praise oh, him. Jesus, oh, Jesus, so lowly and meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Oh, won't you listen? Oh, listen to well, the, the angels sing. sing. Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. It was heralded by the angels. The Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. The wild men came from afar. Oh, yes, they and were. He was guided yeah. by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. <coughs> Jesus. Jesus. Come on now. Jesus, Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy he brings. Well, won't you listen while the angels sing glory, 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 glory to the newborn King. Yeah, glory, glory, glory. Asleep on the head. One more time. 